Hi, my name is Sana Anderson and I'm one of the nutritional therapists at the Optimum Health Clinic. In this video, I want to talk to you about functional adrenal testing in a little bit more detail. There are other videos in this series that give you a bit more information about what we mean by adrenal dysfunction. We talk about symptoms and how we approach supporting adrenal dysfunction. Um, it might be a good idea to have a quick look at at least some of those before you watch this one because this is going to be a little bit more detailed. First of all, we're assuming that we've gone through a client history. We've identified maybe lots of stressful time periods throughout their lives. Uh, they may even feel that stress was one of the key triggers for their fatigue. And in previous videos, I've talked about what the common issues are with long-term stress and how you can support them. But ultimately, to put a really focused and personalized plan together, testing is a really great option to gain that extra bit of insight. So functional testing for adrenals tends to involve usually a combination of saliva and urine samples. The great thing about most functional tests, including this one, is that they can be done at home. Saliva, it's usually collected using swabs or by spitting into small vials and urine is mainly collected onto sort of strips, something resembling a bit of a larger pH strip, really. Both things really are relatively easy to process and you can do those from home. I'm gonna be talking about a couple of different types of results that we can expect to see uh, from our clients, just to give you a better idea of the information we can gain. Um, the first thing I would say though, is that however detailed a history and symptom analysis you take from a client, uh, what I've learned is that it's pretty impossible to predict what the results will look like. And ultimately that's the whole point of testing. You gain that extra level of clarity and an ability to tailor the support towards the client's needs. So what do adrenal test results look like? Here's a section from one set of results. Uh, this has been measured from the urine samples and it gives us an idea of the amount of cortisol the adrenal glands are capable of producing for the day. So metabolized cortisol, firstly, it represents about 80% of the total cortisol production. So it's a really good measure basically of the fuel in the tank that you have for the day. The optimal level, it should fall somewhere between the two stars that you can see. Um, in this case, there seems to be quite a lot of fuel in the tank, actually bordering on a little bit too much. Um, interestingly, the client behind these results is relatively young, um, but has gone through some very intensely stressful periods, both physically and psychologically. So if we just looked at this part of the test result, we'd go, okay, the total output seems okay. Maybe a little bit too high, but perhaps not really that much to worry about. But then we want to move on looking at how the cortisol levels are behaving throughout the day. So we are supposed to produce different levels of cortisol at different points in the day uh, because cortisol is also part of our circadian rhythm or basically our sleep and awake cycle. This is where we can look at the saliva free cortisol pattern. These results you can see show five different readings uh, taken from the saliva samples that have been collected at very specific time points throughout the day. The first sample is taken immediately as soon as you wake up. The second one is taken 30 minutes later after you get out of bed and start your day. And the difference between these two readings, it's called cortisol awakening response, or it's often shortened as CAR. So what's that all about then? Um, basically, we're looking at how you respond to the world as you wake up, because you could look at the act of waking up being as a bit of a mini stress test. Um, you can see how the body responds. Um, in this case, you can see that the response is actually pretty high, quite a bit higher than the expected maximum rise, um, which has been sort of established through research to be around 160%. 
the figure for this client is actually just over 500. Obviously, there's some flexibility in the awakening response so that the body can respond to the daily unique challenges. But equally, seeing a very high CAR, cortisol awakening response, um, it is often linked to um, things like long-term fatigue issues, chronic pain, um, also can be sometimes linked to PTSD. In this client's case, doing the test was really useful because we now know that instead of supporting suboptimal adrenal function, we actually need to concentrate on calming the system down. As with most situations, we need to look for those stressors. And in this client's case particularly, are there any ongoing sources? Um, based on their symptoms and history, there was actually concern of possible chronic infections and those could definitely be one of the triggers for the ongoing adrenal response. This second case is another interesting one, again showing why testing can make such a big difference. The client history isn't actually that dissimilar from the first one. There are some periods of very intense physical training, some infections, various emotional stressors. The client's ability to handle stress at the time of testing wasn't great, and having to push through some challenges was often leaving them tired, but feeling very, very wired. The test I'm using in both of these cases also measures certain neurotransmitter metabolites. Um, you can see the one called vanil mandalate, which is basically a breakdown product of adrenaline. As you can see in this client's case, uh, there's actually a higher than optimal amount of it found in the urine sample. This is a pattern that I quite often see where the lack of sufficient daily cortisol output can be at times compensated by higher levels of adrenaline. Um, great if you absolutely must push through something, but not helpful on a daily basis uh, because adrenaline-based energy generally isn't what I'd call real energy and it may well leave you feeling quite wired and then as a, as a result, not able to sleep very well. So in this case, it was really helpful to understand these two sides of the coin. Um, we had the low daily cortisol and then higher than optimal adrenaline output. And that way we could again tailor the support accordingly. Because if we went in and sort of stimulated better adrenal function directly, we could have also run the risk of increasing the adrenaline levels and therefore making them even more wired. Instead, we supported the adrenaline breakdown first by adding certain nutrients that support the adrenaline metabolism. And then only after that, put in some more support for the cortisol balance. Ultimately, this is only a very small snapshot of the journeys of these two clients, first of all, um, and snapshot of different types of test results. Um, but I hope it's given you a bit of an insight into how adrenal testing can play part in working towards better health and better energy levels. If you want to find out more, you can check out the other videos in this series, and there's also more information on our website at theoptimumhealthclinic.com.